Okay, this is class three of criminal law. Uh, today, we're gonna jump right into chapter three, which talks about, uh, we're starting to get into the meat of criminal law, uh, the parts that, that really uh, we use all the time. And that is the general principles of criminal liability. With each crime, there are elements to a crime. And I'll write that up there. It's an important word to know. Elements. Elements exist in both criminal law and civil law. Elements are basically parts of what makes up the crime. Uh, and it can vary depending on what type of crime we're talking about. For instance, uh, one everyone would know, let's say, uh, homicide, murder. What do you think would be an element of the crime of murder? If you said someone dying, you would be right. That is an element of murder. It is one part of what makes up the crime of murder. And each crime has elements associated with it. Again, the same thing applies to civil law where um, a actionable event that you could sue in court over would have elements to it. Steps that must be fulfilled in order for the, in that case, a civil uh, action to exist and for a verdict to be in the favor of the plaintiff. Today we're going to focus on one of the primary elements of any crime and that is actus reus. Actus reus. Or in other words, the criminal Act. There's nothing too spectacular about actus reus, except for the fact it's a bizarre Latin word. But boiled down, actus reus is really just the act, the thing, the criminal thing that leads to the crime. In the sense of murder, for instance, Sure, the person dying or, or being dead is a part of that, uh, part of the element of the crime, but what about taking the knife and stabbing the person? The actual act that causes the death. What about that? Well, that is actus reus. The act of stabbing or shooting or, or doing whatever you're doing that's going to uh, get you arrested and, and uh, put in jail or executed. That's actus reus. That's the criminal act. Now, before we go uh, any further, we're, I want to give everyone a brief overview of um, the general uh, elements, what, what we talk about when we say elements of a crime not just the actus reus, although today that's where our focus is going to be. So, we have the actus reus, we have the mens rea, we have the concurrence, and I'll explain these in a second, we have causation, and we have the harm, the criminal harm. This is the grab bag that legislatures have available to them when they create a criminal law. Remember what we've already talked about, when it comes to a crime, the legislature 
creates the act you can't do, and then creates the punishment for that act. Well, some of the elements that are in the grab bag, actus reus, the actual act that causes the harm, which is prohibited. We have the mens rea, which isn't always necessary, but the mens rea is what's in the mind. What were you thinking when you stabbed the person that is now dead? What were you thinking? Were you sleepwalking? Were you just mindlessly going about and then just stab the person? Or were you lurking in the bushes and then jumped on that person and, and stabbed him? What were you thinking? Because you, you, know, you stabbed him because you wanted to steal what they, what they had on them or whatnot. That's mens rea, the criminal intent. What was behind your mind when you did it? Concurrence. Well, if there is a mens rea requirement, then these two elements must occur together. After all, imagine a situation, for instance, we'll use murder, that's, you know, typical one. Well, you're outside, in the bushes, waiting for uh, the innocent victim to come by so that you can jump on them and stab them. I know this is kind of morbid, but uh, hopefully this will keep your attention. Well, the victim comes by, and lo and behold, you fell asleep. You're not a very good criminal. You're looking to stab someone and steal their uh, clothes or purse or whatever. And instead you fall asleep. Well, you have a nasty habit of sleepwalking. You go ahead and sleepwalk your way into killing someone. Well, your intent originally was to kill someone. You ended up stabbing the person, you acted criminally, but your mindset wasn't there. And in fact, we're going to talk about actus reus in the sense of whether or not someone voluntarily acts or not. But if that intent changed, then you don't have concurrence. There must be a concurrence between the intent and the act itself. We're definitely going to go into more detail about this, but like I said, today we're going to focus on actus reus. There must be causation. This concurrence must cause the harm. You stab someone, it's just a flesh wound, it's not going to kill them, they wouldn't even bleed to death. Well, a few days later, they run in front of a car and get run over. Well, death does occur, but it doesn't occur because of your action. It doesn't occur because of your intent to stab the person. It occurs because of some incident that happens separate from the fact that the person would get stabbed. Now you could argue place and time would that person have been there, if that person wasn't stabbed, etc, etc, but you get to a point where it's just too tenuous to assume cause and effect. And in the situation I just explained to you, that would surely be too tenuous. Uh, now, let's change that up a little bit and say that uh, the person has stitches on or something and those stitches come loose, cause extreme pain, and the person heals over in the middle of the road and then gets run over. Well, the question of causation at that point might not be so tenuous because now she got run over because of the act, because of being stabbed. And of course the harm. If we're talking about murder, death, there must be some criminal harm that occurs. So that's an overview. And again, the mens rea is 